Tuesday night I talked for a few minutes. I didn't talk very long, but I talked on this for a few minutes. And I want to continue with this this morning. I want to read you part of the scripture in Acts, the second chapter. Acts, the second chapter, beginning in the 14th verse. This is on the day of Pentecost. It's whenever the Holy Ghost, the promise of the Father... Jesus said, I'm going to go away, but I won't leave you comfortless. I'm going to send you a comforter. I still believe in the Holy Ghost this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm still Pentecostal. Amen. To the bone. Hallelujah. Peter, after the Holy Ghost falls, and you know they're all speaking in another tongue, and many of the people there in the city, they heard them speaking, and they seen the way they were acting, and they thought, these men must be drunk. Yeah. So Peter stands up, and he gives a sermon with the Holy Ghost boldness. Yeah. And he didn't have before. You remember, he's the one that denied Jesus and couldn't even tell the little maid out there in Pilate's Hall that, right. that he uh, knew the Lord. Wow. And here he stands up in front of all of Jerusalem. The Bible says in Acts, the second chapter, the 14th verse, But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, mm. You men of Judea and all ye that dwell in Jerusalem. Yeah. Be this known unto you and hearken to my words. For these are not drunken, as you suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken of by the prophet Joel. You see, some years and years before this happened, the prophet Joel had stood and prophesied of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. He said, this is that which was spoken of by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days saith God. Yeah. I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh wow. and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy wow. and your young men shall see visions and your old yeah. men shall dream dreams. Yeah. And on my servants and on my handmaidens, yes. I will pour out of my of, in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. Oh. He goes on to say, Brother Day, that I will show wonders in heaven above, yes. and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. Oh. The sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood, Amen. before that great and notable day of the Lord come. Right. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. We are living today in the last days. Whether you believe it or whether you don't, we are still living in the last days. Whether you believe it or whether you don't, the sun will still come up tomorrow. Amen? Hallelujah. It will, it will still set this afternoon. You may not be able to see it, but it's still there. Amen? You may not be able to see the coming of the Lord, but He's still on His way. Amen? We are living in the last days. And Peter says, as he quotes from the prophet Joel, he talks about the young men seeing visions, the old men dreaming and dreams and prophecies going forth. And I believe that the message in these last days is that we are in the last days Amen. and the Lord is coming. Amen. Right. As I begin to type out the vision and dream that the Lord had shared with me, I sent it out this week to several ministers, knowing that I'll probably get ridiculed by some of them, knowing that some of them, you know, will think, well, you know, who do they think he is? But I haven't heard any of that, but I have heard from some people this week that said, you know, you're just confirming. The Lord is just confirming what He's been showing me in my spirit. Amen. Oh. Had a preacher call me yesterday and said the Lord showed him something several months ago oh. that was almost identical, or at least it was along the same lines as what the Lord showed me on February the 1st. Oh, I believe Jesus is coming. Yeah. I believe we're living in the last days. Yeah. I believe that if you turn on... The news, if you look around you right. at the wickedness and the disaster that is in the world today, wow. and if you still think everything is fine, if you still think that this world will never come to an end, wow. then let me ask you something while you've got your head stuck in the sand this morning. All right. If the Lord doesn't come back in your lifetime, wow. you're going to die. And the question still remains. That's it. Whether you go by way of the rapture or whether you go by way of the grave, exactly. a hole in the ground or a hole in the sky, the question still remains today, Brother Rodney. How is your relationship with Jesus? Amen. What kind of condition is your soul in today? Yes. Amen. Come on, preach. I want to talk to you today for just a few minutes. Mm -hmm. Tuesday night I said a spirit, I think we'll call it a sin. Mm -hmm. 
because it's certainly more of a sin than that. I want to talk to you today about a sin that probably is more dangerous than any other sin that you can think of. If not, it's certainly very, very close to the top. Come on, brother. And at first you might think today, well, that's the sin of pride. The sin of adultery, the sin of murder, lust, covetousness, lying, hatred, malice, drunkenness, strife. And all those things are bad. I'm not belittling their power in any way. But the sin that I want to talk to you about this morning will take more people to hell than those. It'll take more people to hell than pornography. It'll take more people to hell than hate. It'll take more people than hell than all the to hell than all the alcohol that's ever been brewed. And that's the sin of neglect. All right. The sin of neglect. The word neglect means to be careless with something. It means to make light of it. It means to be negligent or to have no regard to a certain thing. To give little attention to or respect. It means to disregard. It means to leave it undone. Do you hear that this morning? Amen. To leave it undone, Brother Dave. To leave it unattended. Yes. To leave it undone. To not do it. Countless people have died for the simple reason that they kept putting off to tomorrow what they should have taken care of years ago. Amen. Countless people have died and went to hell simply because they should have taken care of today what they, they should have taken care of yesterday what they put off to today to take care of. You all say it. Neglect. Yes. They kept putting it off. Right. I'll do it later. Mm hmm I'll do it some other time. Yeah. One of the greatest weapons the devil has is getting you to put things off. Yes, sir. Getting you to wait till later. That's right. I shared this with you Tuesday night. We've shared this here on Sunday mornings before, but I'll share it with you again. For those out there that are listening for the first time. Mm -hmm. Someone told this story once, and it couldn't be more true than if it had actually happened. The devil was looking for a weapon. Yeah. Got a lot of weapons, but he was looking for a weapon of mass destruction. All right. One to get a hold of those that he hadn't been able to reach. Come on. One that would deceive the masses. Yeah. So he gets together with some of his demons and he asked the, one of his soldiers there, You got any ideas? He said, Yeah, I know what we'll do. We'll tell them that God is not real. Mm. There is no God. Mm. We all came from monkeys. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, the devil said, well, we've been using that for years and it worked on some. Yeah. But it doesn't work on a lot of them. Because there's too many of them that believe. There's too many of them that, that think about the theory of evolution and think, mm -hmm. that just doesn't make any sense. Amen. Mm -hmm. If you're out there today and you believe in the theory of evolution, trust me, that just doesn't make any sense. All right. Amen. Come on. So he dismissed that idea, though they still used it. It's not the, it wasn't the one he was looking for at the time. The next guy stood up and he said, Oh, I know what we'll do, boss. We'll tell him that Jesus is dead. He was no more than a prophet. He died on the cross. He's dead on the door now. He never came out of the tomb. And the devil said, Well, that's a good one. I like using that, that kind of words. But, and it deceived some. Yeah. Some of them believe, Well, Jesus, he died on a tree. He ain't around no more. But that, that's not what I'm looking. I'm looking for something that carries a powerful but I'm looking for a weapon of mass destruction. Right. The third guy that stood up, he said, well, I've got one. Yeah. We'll tell him that God is real. Yeah. He created the universe. He was here in the beginning. He created man in his own image. Yeah. We'll tell him that he sent his only son, Jesus Christ. We'll let him believe these things. We'll let them believe. Maybe that's where I should put it instead of they'll tell them. We'll let them believe there's a God. We'll let them believe that He created man. We'll let them believe that Jesus died on the cross. We'll let them believe that He came forth triumphant over death and the grave on the third day. Amen. We'll let them believe that there's salvation only in Him. And by this time, the devil's raised his eyebrow thinking, this guy done got in the wrong meeting because I don't want to preach all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So he says, we'll let them believe all of that. But... We'll convince them of this one damnable thing. Yeah. All of that's true. But don't do nothing about it till tomorrow. Jesus is the only way. 
You have to accept him to get to heaven, but don't accept him today. Yeah. Yeah. Accept him later. Yeah. And convince them of that until finally they have no more tomorrows to turn to. Amen. Oh, and that, that caused the enemy to be filled with glee. Mm -hmm. The yeah. sin of neglect. Yes, sir. Let them neglect this salvation. Let them put it off. Let them carelessly cast it to the side and think I'll get to it later. Yeah, I believe in God. I believe in Jesus. But I don't have time today. I'll have time tomorrow. Yeah. And let them believe that until they're in the pit of the damned and pray to God. Oh, I wish I had not have put off to tomorrow what I should have taken care of today. Amen. The sin of neglect will cause more souls to miss it than anything else. Amen. Someone made the statement once that the road to hell is paved with good intentions. Mm -hmm. I'd like to add a little saying of my own. All right. The road to hell is paved with the sin of neglect. All right. Because you put it off. You set through altar calls. Come on. The preacher begging you to come to the altar, pleading with you not to leave unsaved. Mm -hmm. And you sit there, and you sit on the convicting power of God, and you held back. You might have even got up and left. You didn't go to the altar. Not because you wanted to defy and deny God forever. You just wasn't ready today. Yeah. Amen. That's what he don't have to get you to be a drunk. He doesn't have to get you to be an atheist. He doesn't have to get you to be some kind of huge sinner. Right. He just has to get you to think that, well, I'll get right tomorrow. Yeah. Amen. Until finally, Brother Sleece, you don't have any tomorrows left. Right. You've wasted them all, one right after the other. Saying, I'll get ready later. I'll do this later. I'll pray later. I'll, I'll ask God into my heart later. I'll put my faith in Jesus later. Until finally, you don't have no laters left. Yeah. Right. The sin and neglect will drag you to the pit of hell. All right. You'll put it off, and you'll put it off. Let's read about the virgins this morning in Matthew, the 25th chapter. You see, this sin of neglect just doesn't pertain to the sinner. But if you're a Christian out there listening to me today, and if you neglect your prayer life, and you neglect your study life, and you neglect going to the house of God, when I, when I have more time, I'll go to church. Right now, I've got my school, I've got my job, I've got the kids. I've got the ball games. I've got all this stuff going on. When, when all this is over, then I'll have time for God. i got news for you. The enemy's always going to find something. The time, the, the, when you get to the place where you think, I have time for God now, no, he'll bring something else up on you. Oh, here's another club you can join. Here's another sport the kids are in. Here's another class you can take to better your education. Amen? Here's, there's, listen, there's an extra job that you can do here. We, now you need two jobs instead of one. Mm. Amen? Now that you have time, now you need two jobs instead of one. Come on. He'll always find some way to fill that spot that you intended to fill with God. Mm -hmm. You weren't out sitting somewhere. You just kept putting God off. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You, know, you know how many people today missed out completely? Simply because they were good people. All right. But the enemy just kept them busy. All right. And they just kept putting off God and putting off God. Amen. I'll get right tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I'll do that tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I'll pray tomorrow. I'll go to church next week. Come on. Till finally you find yourself years down the road, you ain't been to church in years. Your Bible's got dust all over it. Yeah. You don't even know what a prayer life is anymore. Come on, pray. Because you've neglected the things of God. Yeah. And I got news for you. On the day of judgment, when you stand before God, it ain't going to matter how smart you are. Now, God don't put no premium on ignorance, and I don't have anything against education. Oh, wow. But your education don't impress God. That's it might impress man. Oh, look here, I've got my PhD and my whatever here, you know. Mm -hmm. I've got my degree in theology. Yeah. Well, that's all fine and good, but that don't do nothing for God. Amen. It ain't gonna matter how much money you got. Oh, look how much money I got in my billfold. Yeah. Look at my stock portfolio. Doesn't matter. Come on. Look at all the land I own. Doesn't matter. Right. What matters is how you stood with God, your relationship with Him, and did you neglect the things that was most important for the things that were more insignificant in life? All right. Spent your whole life wasting it. Mm 
Come on. on things that are not eternal and just let God slip right on by Amen. your relationship with Him. Right. He neglected it. Listen to these. Listen to this about these ten virgins. Matthew 25 and 1. Now you can call this a warning to Christians if you want to. At the very least, the five foolish virgins, if they weren't supposed to be a type of Christian, they were certainly a religious, supposed to be a type of a religious people or some people that had knowledge. They may not have had relationship, but they had knowledge. There's a big difference in that. We got a lot of people today that have knowledge but don't have relationship. God's more interested in your relationship than He is your knowledge. Amen? Come on. Come on. Amen? Right. I didn't marry my wife because she was smart. She is smart. Don't get me wrong. And if she hears this, honey, you're very smart. But I didn't want to marry her. Amen? Come on. I married her because I loved her. She loved me. Right. Our relationship didn't have nothing to do with how smart one of the other yeah. was. That's Amen. Right. That's what God's interested in today. He's interested in Brother Sleeves' relationship with Him, not His knowledge. Oh. Amen. Knowledge is a good thing, but the Bible speaks of the people that are ever learning, right. but never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. You can be smart. A lot of smart people went to hell. Yes, sir. Amen. True. Some of them too smart. They decided they were so smart they figured out that there was no God. Yeah. They took X and Y and plused it and came up with the monkey. Yeah. Amen. Come on. That don't sound very smart to me. Amen. What's it say about these virgins? Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened to the ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were wise and five were foolish. Yeah. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. Now I want you to notice something. It didn't say that they didn't take the vessel. It just says they didn't take the oil. Yeah. And I think in a minute as we read on, we'll see that they more than likely had the vessel with them. So when they first took off, you see ten virgins. They had their lamps. Right. They had their vessels. The five foolish had an appearance that they had oil with them. They were carrying around an empty can, but they at least had an appearance you couldn't tell at first. But the proof was getting ready to be in the pudding. Amen? Right. It was fixing to come to light that they weren't ready. It was fixing to come to light that they had been neglectful in what they were supposed to be taking care of. Five. five were wise, five foolish. They, and the foolish, the Bible says, took their lamp, but took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. Right. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. Amen. And at midnight there was a cry made. See, there's a cry going out in the Spirit today. That's right. If you get your spiritual ear to the rail, you can hear the train coming and, 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 the, and the whistles are blowing. Amen. Right. There was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. All right. And the Bible says in verse 7, Then all those virgins arose mm -hmm. and trimmed their lamps. Right. Think about that. All the virgins. The foolish didn't arise and say, Well, there ain't no sense in trimming our lamps because our vessel over here is empty. Mm -hmm. No, they're trimming their lamps just like the wise, as if they believe they have some oil in their vessel. All right. Oh, don't lose me this morning. We see the foolish trim their lamps. The wise trim their lamps. They're acting as if they've got oil. But apparently, they didn't realize they were out until right here. All right. You know what's worse than being lost? Being lost and not knowing it. All right, really. <clears throat> A lot of that. Oh, being lost and not knowing it. That'll preach this morning. Yes, sir. Amen. Listen to what it says. And the foolish said <clears throat> unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. All right. So now they realize, wait a minute, I didn't bring no oil with me. If they'd have known it, you may not see that the way I see it this morning, but if they had realized, well, we don't have any oil, there's no sense in trimming our lamps. All right. For some reason, they had no oil. Mm -hmm. They had neglected to make sure they had any. They had neglected to check. They had neglected to do the things that it took to make sure that they had to go and buy it however they got their oil. Come on. They had neglected to take care of the thing. They had their lamp. They had their vessel. Oh, but they had left a great big thing undone. Right. They didn't have any oil. Amen. They didn't have any oil in order to fuel 
their lantern, their lamp. They had neglected to do those things. Yeah. They had neglected to check. They had neglected to make sure. They had neglected the most important thing about it. Because you can have a lamp. You can have a wick. Yeah. But you ain't got no oil. You ain't going to show no light. So they turn to the wise and they say, Give us of your oil. Our lamps have gone out and our vessel's empty. But the wise answered saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that buy to them that sell, excuse me, and buy for yourselves. You see, this is a personal thing today. Amen. You can't ride into heaven on the coattails of Brother Billy. Right. You can't ride into heaven on the coattails of Brother Fleas, Brother David, or any other preacher that you know. It won't do you any good to be in his hip pocket. He's going to leave his pants behind. Come on. Somebody said years ago, they said, if I can just be in their pocket when the trumpet sounds, I thought, yeah. well... You can be, but their clothes ain't going to go with them. Amen. We're going to be dressed in white robes. Amen. Amen. We ain't going to have to wear these old Walmart clothes when we get up there. Amen. Praise the Lord. we we'll leave them behind. Praise God. And the Bible says, while they went to buy these neglectful virgins, yeah. foolish. You see, you're foolish today if you continue to put off God. You're foolish today if you continue to neglect your relationship with Him. You're foolish today if you continue to neglect the fact that you need salvation. Right. You're foolish today if you continue to put God on the back burner and everything else on the front burner. Yeah. Because time is running out. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. He can split the eastern sky at any moment, but even if He don't, right. we may bury you this week. Amen. That's true. How foolish can man be? Do you remember the rich man that had all of his things? He said, I know what I'll do. He said to his soul, Soul, I'm so prosperous, I'm going to tear down my barns. I'm a big builder. Right. I'm going to build bigger. Amen. I'm going to build bigger barns. I'm going to do great things. Right. Eat, drink, be merry. Amen. Neglect those things that are most important. Amen. And you know what happens? The Bible says that the Lord said, Thou fool, this night, this night thy soul is required of thee. Now what made him foolish? Wasn't because he wasn't a good businessman. Right. He had more than he could handle. Amen. Had to have him some bigger barns. Had to have him some more property. He was a fool because he had neglected the most important things in life. Right. His relationship with Jesus. Yeah. The same goes for you today out there. Amen. If you neglect this salvation we're talking about. Yes. So finally the foolish say, oh, let's hurry up. Let's take our vessel. Let's hurry. Maybe we can make it. Maybe we haven't waited too late. Let's get some oil in it. And while they're gone to take care of what they should have taken care of beforehand. Do you see that this morning? They waited to the last minute. They had put it on the back burner. They had neglected it all this time. And now they decide, well, now I'm going to get ready. See, a lot of people are going to decide too late. Right. Amen. After the trumpet sounds, after the preacher's gone, after they ain't no church to run to, after the military or the the uh, what do they call that? The the the, well, the the government, for a lack of a the word that I'm trying to find, after the government has taken over, martial law has been instituted, right. churches shut down, Bibles taken away. Yeah, come on. Then they decide they're gonna go to church. Well, I don't think so. Then they decide they're gonna run to that preacher. And the preacher ain't going to be found. He's going to be gone. Amen. That's what happened to these five foolish virgins. Virgins They had put off till tomorrow what they should have taken care of today. While they went to buy, the bridegroom came. And they that were ready went in with him to the marriage and the door was shut. Now listen to this. It doesn't get much sadder than this right here. Afterward came also the other virgins. I'm in verse 11 saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Then Jesus says, Watch therefore, for ye know not, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. You say, Brother Billy, what does that have to do with me? I'm glad you asked me. Hebrews, the second chapter. I want to give you one verse of Scripture out of there this morning as we close. Hebrews, the second chapter, the third verse. Listen to what the Apostle Paul said. How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? Did you hear that? 
if we neglect, if we continue to treat it carelessly, if we continue to say, God, I'm just not ready today, I'll do it tomorrow. If we continue to say, I'll live for God later, I'll work for God later, I'll give to God when I can afford to, I'll do for God after I've done for everything else. You know, many times we just give God the leftovers. Right. Our leftover strength. Because we've used all of our strength on everything else. Our leftover money, if there is any. Yeah. Because we've used our money on everything else. Right. Our leftover love. Our leftover attention. That's right. Until finally we find ourselves in the place where we have neglected so great a salvation. Mm -hmm. How can we escape? How shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? Watch therefore, for you know not when the Lord is coming. Amen. Get ready. Be ready. Stay ready. Because night's coming. Wow. Amen. Take stock of your life today. I don't, if you're out there listening, I don't care if you're 15 I don't, or, or 12. I don't care if you're 80 or 105. Right. Stop for a moment and look at your life and see if you have left the things that are most important undone. Because the most important thing when this life is over is not all of the possessions, not all of the wealth, not all of the even charities that you've been a part of and things that you thought were just good and they were good things. See, the devil doesn't have to get you in, involved in bad things. He can keep you busy with good things. Yeah. Business meetings for, for charities and councils and this kind of work. And you don't have no room for God. You, you think you're a pillar of the community. You're doing good works all over the place. But you've left that which was most important undone. Amen. You've neglected the salvation that has been given to us. Amen. Do you remember what the Bible says in Luke 10 and 38 where Jesus went to Mary and Martha's house? The Bible says that now it came to pass as they went and I'm closing that he entered into a certain village and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. This is Luke 10, 38. Yeah. And she had a sister called Mary which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. And she had a sister called Mary. This is Martha's sister, Mary sitting at Jesus' feet. But Martha, where she at? She was covered about with much serving. We've talked about this before. And came to him and said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister hath left me to serve alone? Bitter therefore that she helped me. Now what was Martha doing? She wasn't off somewhere sinning. She was doing a good thing. She was busy doing good things. She was preparing something for the Lord. She wasn't out doing something bad or something you would call sinful, but she was neglecting the most important thing. And that's what Jesus would tell her. Jesus answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things. That's the word that God wants you to hear this morning. Church member, you are careful and troubled about many things. Sinner, you are careful and troubled about many things. But one thing is needful. This one thing you have neglected. And Mary hath chosen that good part which shall not be taken away from her. You're busy. You're doing a lot of things. But you're missing it on the most important part. You're neglecting this great salvation. Amen. As a Christian, if you continue to neglect your prayer life, if you ne continue to neglect your, the study of God's Word, if you continue to neglect going to church or giving to God, you will drift slowly farther and farther away from God. Right. Farther and farther away from God. Amen. How shall we escape? How shall we escape if we neglect such a great salvation? Don't let the sin of neglect be the reason that you wake up in hell. Yes, sir. Don't find yourself in hell in eternity, because there's no turning back then. Right. Saying, "Well, I, I sure wish I, God, I, one more chance. Right. Just one more altar call." One more opportunity to put everything, to, to take stock in my life and decide, you know what? 
All this is not as important as my relationship with God or the security of my soul. I'm going to put it on the top and then everything else I'll get to, but not till I've got to God and His stuff first. Preacher, you're a fanatic. Well, that's okay. I've been called worse than that. Amen. Come on. Don't neglect your salvation. Don't neglect your relationship with God. Amen. That's a weapon the devil uses in a great way to deceive so many people. Yes. The sin of neglect. It's deadly. Amen. The Bible says there is a sin unto death. Right. Amen. And I'm not saying that neglect is it, but neglect is certainly akin to it. True. Amen. Very close. Exactly. Don't neglect your salvation today. Amen. Take heed. Because we don't know when the Lord's coming. That's we don't know when it's going to be our time to go. Come on. It behoove us all this morning to make sure that our heart is right, right. with God. Someone else have something before we go today.